Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie at CameronMCNZ on Twitter, and I previously did a tutorial on getting started with GitHub Actions. And one of the things I like to do after you get started is gain some insight into GitHub Actions, into your Ubuntu container, into your environment. And so what I want to do here is show you 10 bash commands that you can use to really gain insight into what's going on in GitHub Actions. So if you're going to be building applications in GitHub Actions, especially if you're a Java developer, one of the things you'll want to do is you want to figure out what's installed on this Ubuntu latest container and not just know what's installed, but also get a good idea of how this container is configured and how things are laid out. So I always say whenever somebody gets started with GitHub Actions, there's 10 commands that you really should run just to see what's going on inside of that container in which your code is downloaded and built. So here they are. I like to first do an ls command. So just see what's in the current directory after somebody's pulled from your GitHub repository. I like to do a little bit of a Java version call. See what version of Java is installed. Make sure that Git is installed. See what version's installed. I also like to see the different build tools, Ant, Gradle, and Maven. So that's three different commands, but I've just included them on the fourth command that I like to run. I also like to see if we've got that Android SDK installed. So I try and print out the Android SDK root environment variable. I also like to do the same thing for Selenium, right? It's good to know that Selenium is at your disposal. I also like to know where the actual workspace location is. So the LS will tell me what files are available. It won't tell me where that folder is located. Now, technically it really doesn't matter, right? Like I mean, everything is, is relative, folders should be relative, but I like to know, you know, inside of this Ubuntu image, where where's everything stored? How is this configured? It gives me more insights into the container. I also like to see uh, who the person is that's running the actual code, who's running the workflow. And a little who I am I command will do that. Another thing I like to see is just how it, are the, the disks formatted? So there's the DF command, the disks full command. And this will give you an idea of the layout and the structure of the disks. But I'd like to run that as well. And then finally, people want to know what are the different environment variables that are available in your scripts. And the environment variables not just tell you what's available uh, in the GitHub environment variables, but also just in the Ubuntu container in general. So this is really insightful for your application. So I'm going to commit that. I'll click start commit, commit changes, commit that code, then head over into my actions. And you'll see that that is currently running. It's queued up to run. Now it's moved into progress. We see that status bar going in a circle. Let's hope there's no errors. Nope, there weren't. Now I can click on this update main YAML, click on the build. That was one of the steps that was in the file. Look at this run multi-line script because that's where all of the good stuff is. And then just go down here and see what's going on. So you can see that's the only file that was in my repository. So not much there. We can see the different versions of the JDK that's installed 1.8. I might want to update that a little bit on my future builds. We got 2.29 as far as Git is installed. We've got Maven. We've got Gradle. I think if we scroll down, we've got Ant, but notice that Gradle's got support for Kotlin and Groovy and Ant and the whole Linux, uh, Linux operating system. So that's all pretty cool. Ant's installed. You can see that we do have the Android SDK. Those are the Selenium jar files right there. And since we've got access to the Java command line, right, that Java version command shows us that we've got action, access to the Java command line. Well, you know, we can actually run some Java commands if we want, although there's lots of actions that'll make that a lot easier for us. The workspace location is runner work, and then the name of our repository, the name of my repository that I'm running this in is getting started GitHub Actions. Also notice that runner is also the result of who am I? And so that's the who am I call there. How's the disk laid out? Now the 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 df command isn't just about um, uh, finding out what disks are available, but you can see it gives you a whole bunch of information. And you know this might not be useful, but I think it's certainly interesting just to take a look at at some insights into the container that we're running on. That's the result of the df command. And then finally, now this is the, the money right here. This is the list of the environment variables and people are often really interested in that. And people often Google, they're like, hey, what are the different environment variables that are available to me? And it's like, hey, don't, 
don't bother Google. Just do an ENV in a uh, any environment and you'll get to see all of them. And so here you can see, I mean, just it's, there's a whole bunch of environment variables available. Starts on line 99. Let's say line 100, make the counting easier. And it goes all the way down to 180. So you're looking at like 70 to 80 different environment variables, depending on, yeah, like the seven, 79 environment variables, I guess, or is that 81? My math's not good, but yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. So notice there's some that are specific to GitHub, but then there's ones that have to do with various different resources that are installed on this Ubuntu image that you can take advantage of. So, you know, it's worthwhile actually just doing a quick look through here, just so you know that, that these things are at your fingertips, because you might think, Oh, you know, I didn't know Gradle was installed or, um, you know, I didn't know that uh, this Chrome agent was installed. And then maybe you can actually go in and take advantage of that in the future. And so anyways, there you go. That is what I, one of the things I always recommend people that are new to GitHub Actions do. Just write a, a simple script. It doesn't have to be in a complicated repository or anything like that. And just run these commands and see all of the different things that are happening inside of that Ubuntu container when you run GitHub Actions. And there you go. That's everything you need to do in order to gain a little bit of insight into your build tools and your environment that you're running all of your continuous integration and continuous delivery workflows with GitHub Actions. Now, if you enjoyed that tutorial, head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. Lots of great tutorials on enterprise software development there. Also, if you're interested in my personal antics, you can follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.